Horizon Zero Dawn is an already established action RPG developed by Guerrilla Games and published by Sony on the PS4. The setting is a post-apocalyptic world, which has done, been done before, but never in this way with mechanical creatures roaming about the land like deer in a forest. Released in February 2017, it was extremely well received by both critics of the genre and casual gamers. This video serves as a companion piece to our own review, which you can check out from the link in the description. The story is engaging, which keeps you wanting to play more and the world around you supplements this by going from open fields and forest to destroyed cities of old. You just want to keep going to see what else there is in this expansive world. But enough about that, let's get down to gameplay. As far as this goes, it's the same as the PS4 version, which is an extremely positive thing. It feels just as good as the PS4 version with responsive controls, a wide variety of skills and weapons you can upgrade. If anything, the PC version immerses you even more in the world with the new graphical settings you can adjust if you have a PC that can take advantage of it. That's taking nothing away from the PS4 version which still looks amazing, especially on a PS4 Pro and a 4K TV. If you look to the bottom right of your screen right about now, you can see the system specs I used to test this game. Now, the main difference between the PC version and the PS4 version is the graphical options and frame rate. The PS4 was locked to 30 FPS, however, on the PC version, it is only limited by your system hardware. There will always be a trade-off though. You either go for the game looking as pretty as it can, or you try to get more FPS for a smoother experience. Normally, I would take frame rate over visual fidelity any day, but when you have a game which can look this good, you can't help but admire its beauty. At 1440p, I was aiming for at least 60 FPS, with everything maxed out except motion blur, only because I'm not a fan of that myself. I wanted to try for the best visual experience at 60 FPS, which I did get almost all the time. It did dip slightly below that value now and again, but not enough to impact on the experience. At those settings and that resolution, the game is very playable and looks amazing. At 1080p with the same settings, the game still looks amazing and plays even better in my opinion. The much higher frame rate helps with respect to fighting the mechanical creatures and enemies and pulling off some crazy jumping slow motion bow and arrow headshot to an unsuspecting sentry. Now, if you have a PC which can't run the game at those kind of settings then not to worry, the game has a few options to help. Alongside the usual suspects such as texture detail, shadows, etc, etc, the game has a few new settings which have been used in other games recently. Render scale and adaptive performance FPS. The render scale slider will allow you to change the render resolution of the textures without having to change your screen resolution. This will set the render resolution to a set value. This slides from 0 to 100. Adaptive Performance FPS slider will change the render resolution automatically to keep the FPS you have selected. So, if you select 60 FPS, the game will change its render resolution throughout the gameplay automatically to maintain that FPS. This slider moves from off to 120. However, these two options cannot be used together. The game also has a benchmarking test which I personally think every PC game should have. This allows you to test your settings via a preset map to which the game automatically plays to see what FPS you get, without having to jump in your save game. Even though they have those settings, the game is very graphically demanding, and not gonna lie, I was hoping for a bit more performance out of it. But it's still early days for the PC version and I'm very hopeful that once there are a few updates for optimization for the game and GPU drivers, there will be a lot more frames per second to squeeze out of it. Personally, I had a few crashes while playing the game, about three in a five hour session. I'm not gonna hold that against the game though as I think it's possibly down to Nvidia drivers. There is no denying it, the game looks fantastic. Even on medium settings at 1080p and coupled with the gameplay, it's a game any action RPG fan should play. The game also comes with Frozen Wilds DLC, if you need another reason to check it out. 